Hi, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, this is Cami, and I am streaming live from home. And this is all about cutting the clutter, how to get more out of life by living with less. And today I have a very special guest. She is a dear friend of mine, client, author, friend, woman, amazing, extraordinary. <laughs> I have to introduce her. Her name is Jessica Eves Matthews. She is America's advocate for women in business. She is an award-winning entrepreneur. Um, into I'm going to butcher this word. Intellectual property and business lawyer, best-selling author, and sought-after speaker. This is Jessica Eves Matthews, and she is joining us live. Hi. Hi. <laughs> oh, it's so good to see her. <laughs> so you are coming all the way from New Mexico, right? San Diego. We're in San okay, I'm all confused because you are <laughs> living in New Mexico. No. No, we moved to San Diego. We have so much to catch up. We still have our house in, in New Mexico. I know, we do. We have a lot <laughs> to catch up on. We, um, Yeah, we moved to San Diego almost a year ago. Wow. So, so we can even been, start with that yeah, because it's been really good. You and I met <laughs> when you were here in um, Issaquah. You were actually one of my very yeah. first clients when I started my organizing <laughs> business. I was uh, 21 yeah. years old and just hungry to do anything. And I was like, I'm going to work with you and I'm going to make your life better. <laughs> And you did. <laughs> I'm so grateful that you were persistent. Like I was so disorganized and crazed at the time that I wouldn't even return your phone calls because I was too busy to even call you back to get help. And you kept calling me until I finally said, please come help me. And you made everything better. I wish that you were here. I wish I could have you in my life every day. Oh, I'm <laughs> in Diego. That sounds amazing. Well, and You're welcome. Anytime. Oh, thank you. So to, let's talk a little bit about moving just in general. Why, why is moving so stressful? Uh, <laughs> oh, you know, for me, it always involves realizing how much crap I have that I have to move. That is one of the most depressing parts about moving for me. It's, it's, I think that's a big part of it. It's just like packing everything up and moving it and, uh it made me, for this move, Kate, I'm a single mom, for those of you who don't know me, and um, my daughter, Kate, and I literally were like, we are taking the bare minimum to San Diego. So we still have a house full of stuff back in New Mexico, and um, it's been lovely. Completely um, downsized the things that we need and things that we live with, and and on the other day, it's funny in this interview, because I was literally just thinking the other day, I could probably, except for photographs and sentimental things, tell someone like you to just go get rid of everything. And I wouldn't remember what we had or care. Like, we're fine. And we've lived a whole year without any house. And, and um, we're just doing great. We're kind of liberating to come out here. And it's like we started fresh. And it's been nice. I kind of just want to burn my other house down. <laughs> Don't you care that house? I would never do that. I, <laughs> the stuff in it, I'd lo I'd like to just do that and have it all be gone. <laughs> well, I'm very good at that, but I can. I know. You know, it's just so amazing because it is true. I, you know, personally as well, I have been all over the map this last year and literally living out of a suitcase and you know I'm here there everywhere and then you look around and you're like I don't yeah. need most all of this mm -hmm. to a real awakening so no. yeah it's liberating to realize that I'm enjoying it although I do have a tendency to you know then the void you know so I have to be really careful to not I have to sit on my hands and not buy a bunch of stuff that ends up cluttering where we're living because that is a tendency of mine <laughs> well and just getting settled into a new place you know and and I love that you yeah. kind of talked about downsizing before the move because then you take your essentials and you realize like I'm not missing any of this anymore uh -uh. no <laughs> no in fact even you know I've got a lot of clothes and things that I at I just have it, you know, I, 
it would be amazing to have, you know, some fairies show up at that house and just clean it out and maybe leave furniture so I could use it as a rental, but just have everything else disappear. That would be amazing. Um, uh, I don't know. It was a couple months ago I went home for, for, for business because my, my law firm is still based in New Mexico, partners there. Um, and so I came home for some business and stayed at the house, which was amazing and um but i i got in there and i seriously got kind of depressed because i looked around i was like full of stuff like we're really different state and we still have all of this stuff here in this house and it kind of made me depressed actually (laughs) yeah so i i'm all about i'm a big fan you're feeling overwhelmed with stuff and when you're moving on and then you come back to the old you're kind of like what (laughs) <laughs> yes uh, why do we have all of this I mean it was crazy because we there, it looked if you walked in that house right now it looks like people are living there all the time like there's it's just there's stuff like dirty it's organized but it's there's just a lot of stuff so so what uh, is yeah. the biggest clutter yeah, need this last year about how little we need to be comfortable that's a great point. So what is your biggest clutter challenge that you find with traveling? Oh, God. Um, you, mean, you mean like taking trips traveling? Um, well, you're, you're kind of spread out again. So, I mean, I know you're on the road with speaking yeah. engagements and work. Uh-huh. And so... Yeah. Well, what are yeah. The, we're going to talk about some essentials that you absolutely have to have in place, and then I also want to talk about some common challenges yeah. that you find with trying to keep certain things organized. Okay. So you know the the challenge for me is I hate. Um, I I'm really bad about that actually. In fact, I'll get back from a trip and I will leave a suitcase. I'll live out of the suitcase. <laughs> like I would rather not unpack it. Um, I think I have this resistance to dealing with my stuff, which is why I need someone like you in my life. Um, so that's a big challenge for me. And, but, you know, even with that, like, Katie and I just went to Europe, um, and we only carry-ons. Like, we found these really nice um, large carry-ons, but they were carry-ons, and that is literally all we took with us. And I took, like, my computer bag, and we packed a three-week trip. We spent a week in New York at a big horse show, and then we went to Europe um, for two weeks. And it was kind of amazing how we could travel with very little, you know, streamlining our outfits and the shoes we took and toilet. Um, that That was actually pretty amazing because I'm definitely somebody in the past who would overpack. And in Europe, we've been to Europe a couple of other times, and we both got so frustrated frustrated stuff when we were there that that's why we did it this time we're like we're 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 each taking one suitcase and it's a carry-on and we will check it it'll be easy and um that was pretty great I'm kind of a convert now for traveling light as well but it's also good on the back end because when I get home I have less to unpack which is really to pack (laughs) Well, and do you think also, like, I think the best of mothers always want to make sure you have everything that you could possibly need yeah. on your human. So do you think that that's... Yeah. I, the bigger issue for me when Kate was younger, I definitely was the one with the mom per I still am. I mean, I think of the stuff in my purse, like, you know, hands sanitizer and it's in biotic ointment and lip balm um you know you just have that, like, that bottomless mom purse that basically has everything you and snacks you know like some granola bars <laughs> um, essential oils which is a big thing for me um and yeah and so it's not as big a deal it's nice having a daughter who is 14 and pretty self-sufficient now because um, you don't have to worry about that as much as I used to. But, you know, when we would travel when she was little, oh, my God, it was like car seats and um, strollers and diaper bags. And even when she was, you know, three and four, I still had to take, you know, the car seats and the strollers. And 
and it's 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 tough as a mom it's you just always burdened with a lot kind of hard to avoid that especially in our culture because we we do travel a lot and we're spread out country and um you know it's it's kind of it's like we're i don't know or something moms are (laughs) and so i mean (laughs) This is, you know, what I've always loved and admired about you is that no matter what's going on, you seem to always keep it together. You always have what Kate needs. You always have what you're needing, even when you're on the road at all these different places. And so what are some things that have really kept you organized in terms of mindset or products that kind of help keep keep things together for you? Well, I think that I'm, I'm big on making lists. I think yeah, I learned that list maker and I've actually created, so my daughter is a, for people watching who don't know this, my daughter is a, is a actually a nationally and internationally ranked dressage writer. And we've been showing, and, um, but horse shows also require a lot of stuff. Like you, it's, it's crazy when you go to a horse show, what you move in to the horse show. You've been to shows with us, Cammie, so you see all the stuff that we have in our tack room. And, um, and so I find that I don't ever rely on my memory for the things that I need. And I, um, I'm really big on making checklists so that I don't forget important things because I really, as much as I don't like feeling cluttered and burdened with a lot of stuff, I hate not having what we need. That's very frustrating. And it causes a lot of stress, especially with editing or like if I'm speaking, um, or something like that. And I want to make sure I've got, all the things that I need to make sure that the, um, you know, I've got my PowerPoint, um, uh, you know, an adapter for my laptop cord, if, just in case wherever I'm speaking doesn't have that. And, you know, just all, all the little things you, that cause a lot of stress if you don't have them with you. So for me, it's about, um, you know, like every, at the end of every horse show, I'll, I'll make, what do we not have? What do we need to replace? What do we need to get? Um, and that's part of what keeps me really organized is I, I make sure I revisit that. My golden retriever is, you see Skylar? <laughs> He's about to climb up in my lap. Skylar! For those of you that are listening to the audio portion of this, Jessica has one of my favorite animals of all time. It's this gigantic uh, golden, uh, golden retriever. And he uh-huh. <laughs> He's a big chunk love, and he'll just barrel his head into yes. your legs, and we call it the Skylar hug. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> he's so sweet. Anyways, he's always sort of like, pay attention to me. He'll climb into my lap, and he's uh-huh. like a you know eighty pound golden retriever. So, um, yeah. So for me, like the big t- tip for me is is, is lists, um, and I have them for. all all of my businesses. In fact, I'm Kate about list making just this last week. Um, she's getting, trying to get more organized with her schoolwork. So yeah, I'd say that's my tip. I mean, it's kind of, although you can do it on your phone, but um, you don't need a lot of technology for that. My daughter is, there she is. <laughs> it's Emmy. Oh no. Hi. <laughs> He's so tall she it's, is. <laughs> it's so crazy because, you know, one of the beautiful perks of following my dream for for helping people get organized was that the the people I have met and the families I have belonged to, and when you and I first got together learning about all of these things, Kate was four or five. Oh, she was just a little baby. Yeah, no, she, I think she was four. Yeah, maybe she was close to five. But yeah, now she's, she's super tall. Can you see how tall she is? Where, where are you? She. There you are. She's, she is here. Hey, come stand next to me for a minute. <laughs> this is your live. You like how we're just totally like hijacking your live. Come stand, come stand next to me so Cammie can see you are. I'm this tall now. <laughs> <laughs> Stop! Stop! I know she can't hear you. (laughs) Go up to like her eyebrows. Yeah, her hair is so long. She's quite. Oh my word! I know. (laughs) I know. It's crazy. Part of thank you for for always allowing me to be part of life because it's just been it's been one of 
great um, heartfelt experience because you literally have just taken me so many literally different states and places and experiences. <laughs> um, and so, well, we, I just, your family. Oh, you're very kind. I just, you know, it takes a lot. It's a very, don't you think it's a very vulnerable experience to have somebody come in and, and tell you basically what you need and what you don't need? And I mean, it's uh-huh. a very vulnerable Yeah. Thing. It's, you know, and I do a lot of um, bitching for women. And I think that, um, you know, anytime somebody comes into your space and tells you, I think the ego can really get involved and I think it's easy to get defensive and, um, and I think we attach that to our things. Like I think we attached to the stuff that we have around us, which is why this last year has been so good for me to really shed and understand that we didn't need, you know, so much stuff, but you've come in multiple times in my life and, um, just from the very beginning, I trusted you. Like from the very start, we just had that kind of rapport. I really let you um, help me pare down and get organized. But like the last time you came and you came, I basically was like, I don't even want to know what you're getting rid of. Just get rid of stuff. And um, it's an amazing thing to be able to trust somebody to do that. Um, because trust just anybody. I think you're probably one of the few or only people in the world that I would trust with that. But, but I think we all get really attached. Like we attach significance and uh, to our things. So a little, yeah, I can feel very vulnerable to let somebody come in and handle the things, much less get rid of some of them. Well, I feel that, you know, for a lot of people that are watching or listening you know, they want to digest information in little bits that they can take away and they can implement themselves. But also, on the other hand, mm-hmm. I talk about in the book, let's be real. Let's be real with your life. Yeah. Are you? Do you have the time to make dramatic change in your environment? And if you don't, how can you connect with somebody who can? Um, because I think for a lot of women, yeah. it's maybe that shame factor that they should be doing it or, you know, maybe they're just in a place where they need a kickstart or a clean sweep. And so we really advocate for it's okay to have somebody come in and help you through the process. So. um, Yeah. And, you know, for me, when we first met, I was newly divorced and, um, you know, I was, you know, trying to get a couple businesses off the ground and my law practice And I had no choice but to have help. Like at that point, it was a matter of survival to have help. I had to have somebody come help me, which is what got me over that guilt that I think a lot of women feel. I do think in our culture, women are still conditioned that they're supposed to be the ones managing the home and being well at it. Um, I don't enjoy that, to be honest. I like cooking, but that's about the only thing I like about running a house and, um, I like having my space. I like having it be beautiful and organized. But I think that we as women um, often feel like we should, like that is something we should be good at and something we should do. But I have personally found in my life that hiring somebody like you, who's way better at it than I am, and who's more objective about it so that it's easier for you to make the harder decisions and, um, and you kind of can help coach me through making those decisions of things that I need to pare down um, with, uh, but it free to do the things that I'm really good at, you know, launching companies and coaching women and speaking and writing my books and being a great parent to Kate and, you know, supporting her with her dream. So I've really released any guilt. And that's the one thing, if there's anything, any if people watching, if they get, take away from hope that they would question why they feel that they have to do all of that themselves. Like sometimes the very best thing you can do is release it to, to a really brilliant expert like like you um, to handle that. It's going to be done the right way. It's going to be done faster and emotional trauma. And it frees you up to do the things, uh, you know, that you're good at, that, that you should be spending your time on this planet doing. So, but I think well, that's hard. I think it's really hard for a lot of women. It's very hard. And it, like I said, it's a very vulnerable process because when you come, when I come into somebody's home, you are 
literally thrown into their life for six hours. Mm. And so their yeah. dynamics, their things, it's a very personal experience that I, I, I take very seriously. And so, you know, a, a lot of times when people think of attorneys, they also think that vulnerability factor comes up. And when I met you, what I loved about your approach to your industry is that it was all about education and support. And so for somebody that is, you know, not sure where to go with how to approach, you know, so I know that you specialize in intellectual property and, and business, which is um, a yeah. lot of what my clients would seek help in how do you organize that right. process for them and alleviate that that stressor mm. you know i think it ties back to my um long time tendency to do list making and checklists everything's covered which is you know as a good lawyer you do that you know you're you have to be very analytical and organized mentally to make sure that um you know all the base clients and, and, and I think, you know, what I did early on in my law practice and when I started doing it more common now, although, you know, we're still innovating, um, is that I basically streamlined and automated that process for clients as much as I could. So, it, it, you know, I, I'm very passionate in doing a combination of educating what they need, but then creating packages or flat fee arrangements with like, these are the things that you need. This is why you need them. And here's the order in which we can take care of it. And um, we just make it as easy. And, and we, you know, we try to demystify the process as we want to hide the ball. I feel like a lot of lawyers feel like their job security is tied with keeping the whole process mysterious. And, and I don't believe in that. I, because I'm an entrepreneur myself, and I've hired lawyers myself in the past because I don't think it's always good when you're when you're the business owner to rely on your own counsel as a lawyer. And it's you know it's a frustrating experience to deal with lawyers. It's expensive. It's not money you're ever excited to spend generally. Even though I encourage people to shift their mindset. To me, it's to protect yourself and protect your hard work. But I think a lot of people go into it feeling intimidated and that they have to spend the money on something like it's like you know i'd rather buy like the the new mac daddy um stove oven combo from wolf versus a new water heater or you know having my septic tank serviced yeah. <laughs> and getting your legal stuff is kind of like the latter it's not as sexy or fun but it's absolutely vital to things functioning properly um and so you know people uh, tend to get a little frustrated about having to even deal with lawyers. So for me, from the very beginning, I wanted to make sure that people enjoyed the process and, um, and that we systematized it in a way that cracks and they would understand what was important and, um, and then feel, you know, like comfortable that things were being taken care of and they understood the roadmap. So to me, having organization in the, in the experience for the client and not just in, in our process is a really big part of why clients like working with our firm, I think. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, in terms of, of clutter and personal relationships and that, you know, when my grandpa passed away, uh, it's been a year ago, May, and all of a sudden, not only did I have physical clutter, I had paperwork, I had legal documents I had to figure out. It was everything right. at once. And so to go to an expert... Right like yourself who says, okay, you have all this going on. <laughs> Here's how this process yeah. is going to work. It eases everything out of your mind. And so mm -hmm. Jessica, if you have one thing that you would like to share with our readers, viewers, listeners, anyone who is tuning in right now, what piece of advice would you give to somebody who is contemplating living their life clutter free and they want to get more out of life by living with less. What one thing would you leave them with? I would say don't even have your inclination because what it gives you is freedom. Um, and freedom to me is one of the most important values we can have as a human being because freedom gives you options and opportunities. 
And I feel like having clutter and it's, you know, clutter can come in a lot of forms, um, emotional, energetic clutter as well. Uh, and that can involve sort of ways that bind you to one place or one way of living. But then phys physical clutter to me is sort of a, it's the manifestation of the clutter that's going on inside of your mind and heart and soul. To me, decluttering things physically around you and downsizing will have a really powerful effect on your energy and your mindset. And um, like for us, I feel so, it's so at this place, only four years away from college and I'm beginning to realize I'm going to be an empty nester more, faster than I know. Like it's going to happen. And I am so excited to be, I can literally, the minute she leaves for college, I could move to France. I could totally, pay, I have nothing to tying me. And to me, that's a huge value. For someone who values that, that's a big deal. Now, there are some people that really love to have roots and want to have that home, home too. But I do have that in New Mexico. We love that house. I don't plan to sell it. Um, but it's, it's an incredible thing to be decluttered because of the freedom and the opportunities you get because of it. That inclination to declutter and downsize, I don't think you would regret it. I think anybody listening or, um, or watching this would benefit from um, just try it, you know, try it for a year. Because I don't think it, it, once you do that, I don't think you'd ever go back to being cluttered. I think that's like a prison, honestly. Yeah, absolutely. And just, I love that you associated the freedom of it because it is just stifling and it can suffocate. There's so many negative uh, emotions that come with excess. And so I think you really touched yeah. on that, not only in your profession, but I love how you brought in the equine world to it. Um, <laughs> and as a mother, because we're all so dynamic, it's never just, mm -hmm. I think when people are thinking about clutter, they think like this room or this, that, but if you really look at yourself, mm -hmm holistically and always ask where where can I downsize this pile this moment this thing um, because we're all doing yeah. so many different things at once so thank you so much for the great yeah. advice in this time that you've shared with us um, oh, thank everyone. you for having me it's been so good to talk to you I know we're going to catch up here real soon. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we have a lot of catching up to do. <laughs> so for everybody tuning in, thank you so much. This has been an interview for Cut the Clutter, Get More Out of Life by Living with Less. And to watch more or comment, you can always head over to organizingexperts.com. Thank you so much for watching and listening. And wherever you're tuning in, please like, love, share, and comment. We'll talk to you soon.